I've never seen so many pommy back to fronts. <laughs> hey? You know what I mean? <laughs> Bunch of all quiets. All's quiet on the Western Front. So, <laughs> before we start just going at everyone, Tim is here with the Rover mic. Throw your hands in the air. If you've got any questions for John, throw them right up. We're going to open it straight to the floor. And then we'll be coming back and forth to the stage, if that's okay. Please throw your hands up, John. Throw Hi. your hands up. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I like to swear. I do like to swear. But unfortunately, there's um, children in the audience who we all like to pretend don't swear, except when they're at school. I know. When I was six years old, I used, I used the F word when I was at school. And that was 700 years ago. So what I've done is I replace it with the word Trump. And, the, and Trump, words, Trump works for every swear word. Go Trump yourself, you mother Trumpers. You're really giving me the Trumps. In fact, I think I'll go and take a Trump. And it works for both sexes. I'm going to stick my Trump up your Trump. Okay, so you'll have to work it out for yourself. When, when I feel like swearing, I say Trump. You can, you can do it yourselves. You get away with it. Okay. On, on three, can we get everyone to give us a massive Trump? One... Two, three. No, better is you bunch of Trumps. One, two, three. You pommy bunch of Trumps. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, enough of the small talk. Hey, we, someone got any qu we Think got of a, a curly yeah. question, not a boring one, all right? Hey, John. Yeah. The... Um, Two, two TV series you did, were they better for you than the films or what? Uh, well, they're exactly the same for me. Uh, Mick Taylor in front of a camera, they put the clapperboard in, the sound guy puts the sound up, and I play the same bloody character whether it's a movie or a TV series. So it's, it's exactly the same for me. So, Wolf Creek, you play this... God almighty! Whoa. Who's that... That ugly Trump. You, you, you do look much better in real life. That was, that was after my th second marriage, and I was eating a lot. <laughs> you know how you eat a lot when you just don't want to be with the same Sheila anymore? You picked that one. I didn't pick any. It was him. H he picked it. That's disgusting. <laughs> my God. And the, and the photo makes my face look even fatter. Do you know what, John? I, think I don't look anything like that. Look. I think it's just a widescreen. That's... I'm sorry about that, folks. What was the question? Um, something about was the TV series any different to the film? Oh, I answered that. Yeah, you did. Any more questions for John, you pieces of Trump? Okay. No? Why Is that not? it? Uh, Great, see ya. See you later, guys. <laughs> so, Wolf Creek, you played Mick Taylor, which was apparently based on a true crime in Australia? No. No? No. No. No, it's based basically on um, serial killers. Okay. You know, and uh, we, we sold it as uh, happening because people like that kind of thing. Based, based on true events. Everything's based on true events, for God's sake. You know? <laughs> uh, no, Mick Taylor isn't based on anyone except that Greg McLean yep. uh, uh, saw the outback as another horrific character, you know, and so yep. have someone part of that uh, landscape who uh, murders backpackers and everything else um, was very appealing to him. And then uh, just, before, just before we made the film, uh, this guy called uh, Murdoch killed Fal Falconio, yeah. a, a, a pommy, you know, so not all bad. But um, so, but that was after we'd read the script and everything, and everyone thought it was based on this yeah. uh, outback killer called uh, Bradley Murdoch. But no, no, we, we thought it all up. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. You were there first. We've got a question down the front from Lisa. Hi. Hello there. Hello, um, darling. How hello, are you, how sweetie? Are you? <laughs> you bloody um, marvelous. So when you're back um, in Australia, do you yeah. ever take a holiday in the outback to really enjoy um, being? Well, come down here. Do you really enjoy being Uncle Mick? And then maybe take a drive. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
What the shrimp was that? That's why you call it an entrance. Do you want me to? Do you want me to kick it? That's a big step. Sorry, did I? Did I hurt it? Now, what was your question? Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, you make. I'm it... 71. I can take a fall. <laughs> hey, not bad for uh, an old bloke. Uh, hey. I've got an idea. Is that, is that your girlfriend? Is that your girlfriend? Someone should be your boyfriend. <laughs> I've got an idea. Instead of them asking us the questions, should we go? Should we just go and talk to them? Nah. Okay. So, sorry, Lisa, was Lisa was asking a question about the backpack uh, being a holiday. Sorry, you, you make a great, great entrance, by the way. Um, when you're on holiday, I've heard you've got a great entrance as well. Oh, thank you. Well, when you're on holiday, sorry, that was a bit trumpy. Do you, do you go? Do you go into the outback on purpose and drive around just to genuinely scare the tourists? Because you're obviously very recognisable. I mean, really scare the Trump out of them. Do I drive around in the outback trying to scare the tourists? No, I've got things to do. What will I do today? <laughs> Make a movie or just drive around and scare a few tourists? No, no, I, I don't do that. But I'm from the outback. I was raised in the bush. Um, that's what we call the forest. I think you call it the forest. And you call the bush something else. Yeah. I don't know. But Tim, Tim was raised in a bush. I was raised in the bush. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, in this scene where you're like chopping the German guy at the back of the truck, yeah. And you cut the little willy thing off. Did any of the other guys or yourself wince as you were doing it? Uh, well, the the bloke who made the prosthetics, who made the prosthetic German, um, he used his own body to mould it. And uh, the girls looked at him a little bit kinder after they saw that. And, uh, and I had live a lot of that stuff, right? I had live a lot of that stuff. And... I said some, even for Mick Taylor, I said some very woke stuff that didn't make the camera, that didn't uh, make it into the film. And ended up, uh, that'll make your eyes water, I said to Fruline. Um, uh, but there were some other, um, there were some other ad libs that didn't go down well. And you've got to remember, this is not John Jarrett, this is Mick Taylor. John Jarrett. I've got a racist bone in my body. I'm not homophobic. I'm an all right sort of bloke, you know? But Mick Taylor is out there, right? So one of my ad libs to the poor old Fruline was, hey, Fruline, I didn't know. I didn't know the Nazi was. Woo! That's what Mick said, not me. But there you go. That was one of the ad libs that didn't make it. I wasn't being racist, believe me. Do you find people think it's hard to separate you from Mick? Do you, like, not, not, as, not like in day to day, but when they're at the cons and stuff, do people talk to you as if you are Mick or is it just straight up it's John? Because like, obviously I'm approaching you as John. You're a nice guy. You're really good at climbing. Um, <laughs> but is it, do people come up and be like, can you sign this, Mick? I don't like the way you're looking at me. What a stupid trumpet question. No, not a lot. Kinda. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, I think a lot of us want you to do the Mick Taylor laugh. <laughs> so well, could you do it, please? There's a lot of you here, isn't it? Uh, if we can raise forty grand, I'll do the laugh. <laughs> Tim's gonna come round with the church whip round. No, I, I, I can't do the laugh. No, I'll tell you why. I'll just, I gotta whisper it to you. Oh, oh. Sorry, oh. I can't can do I the laugh. This? No. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay. You want to know the story about the laugh? Yeah. Okay. Well, when I read the script for the first time with Greg McLean back in 2003, bloody long time ago now, um, I said to him that I wanted to work out a chuckle that by the end of the movie sounds, was like Jaws music. You know, so that whenever you heard it, you you trumped your pants. So that and I walked around for ages uh, around my house, coming up with laughs, and I did the <laughs> I did that one, and my dog went like that, and I thought there's something in that one, so I, I chose that one, and it works, it works, doesn't it? it? Scares the Trump out of you, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. 
Just wondering what your experience was like working with Tarantino on Django Unchained. Working with Tarantino on, on Django Unchained. Yay! Yeah, I did that. That was great. Um, Tarantino, um, working with Tarantino. No, I really think he, he learned quite a lot by working with me. And um, he's a better man, a better director. And it was a pleasure to sort of help, the, help him out a little, you know. I I've, been, I've been around for 50 years, Picnic and Hang Rock, right? when he was just a baby. You know? No, no, he's amazing. He's a genius and uh, extraordinary guy. Um, photographic memory, right? And uh, I asked him if he'd seen one of Australian... He loves Australian films. I asked him if he'd seen Wake in Fright, which is a brilliant Australian film made in 1971. And he loves it. And I asked him... Uh, I said, have you seen Wake in Fright? And he says, yeah, Ted, Ted Kotcheff directed. The art director was just the main a reprint there. And I said, I just asked you if, if you'd seen the Trump and thing. You know, so he, he's quite amazing. And I, when I was on set, he came over to me while we were doing the setup. I was sitting, on the, sitting in the hills in, of L, above LA. And I'm sitting there with my wife. And, and we're all bored waiting for the turn around and and Quentin came over to me and he says hey John so do you know the ballad of John O'Casey said no it's a famous Aussie ballad the ballad of John O'Casey and I said no I haven't haven't and anyway off he goes there was old John O'Casey and he sang three verses and a couple of choruses and then got to the end of it and he said and that's the ballad of John O'Casey and off he trotted, and my wife described him perfectly as he walked away. And this is what Quentin Tarantino is. T Quentin Tarantino is beautifully mad. That's what my wife said. That man is beautifully mad. And one of the greatest um, directors of all time, that's for sure. And I think you might be the only person on the planet who could teach Tarantino new swear words. Sorry? Uh, you might be the only person on the planet who could teach him new swear words. Yeah, I have. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, we've got a question over there from Lisa. Yes. Hi. Hi, John. Um, Hi, Lisa, so in... Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Lisa, Lisa. Yep. Are you done? I'm ready now. <laughs> um, so in your earlier films, uh, you've been I'll, I'll, come, I'll come up because I've got industrial deaf yes. deafness Hi. from building houses. I yeah. do. So in your earlier films, you seem to have been typecast as uh, rock star-like characters, you know, playing in bands like Australian Dream and Chase Through the Night and no, uh, All Men Are Liars. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did uh, uh, the soundtrack for your own film, Stalk Her. And yeah, have yeah. you ever considered like uh, and, recording and just, a full album? No, I'm too old <laughs> to be a rock star. But my latest film, I, I do play a, an age rock star because I can, <laughs> I can sing. Yeah. Funnily enough, and uh, my first job as a professional was in 1974, Christmas 1973, actually. And I was in a musical, it was the first thing I did. So, yeah, I come from a family who of quite good singers, and I, I can sing all right, I can hold a tune, let's put it that way. Mm. But um, I'm not going to make a career of it. You don't start... When, when, when Mick Jagger's retiring, you don't start. <laughs> There's a question here from Carl. Oh, do I start? Have you finished season three yet, or Wolf Creek Three? Uh, okay. Now, the the problem with Wolf Creek Three was a, a word called COVID. It delayed us for three years. What are you pointing at? What are you? You're distracting me. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> what? No, not me. I'm just waiting. I didn't say anything. He's answering the question. <laughs> at ease, soldier. Pants down, shut your mouth. Okay. Now, where was I? Well, uh, COVID stopped Wolf Creek. Oh, 3. yeah, COVID uh, trumped up the making of Wolf Creek 3. And then when COVID finished, Greg McLean, the director, uh, who was go had gone broke and was trying to pay off his house, was given all these directing jobs, and he's doing one now called the uh, Desert King in Australia, which is sort of like Yellowstone. And he promises me when he finishes that, we'll do Wolf Creek 3. And if he doesn't, I'll kill him and I won't do it any, hey. anymore. But uh, I, I want to do it as much as you guys want to do it. COVID did a lot of damage to the world in many, many ways. 
Okay, you're the, you're the, you're Hi. Hi. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to ask about Stalker. Yeah. Because it's one of my favourite films. And I just wanted to ask if it was... Was it quite a like, change to play someone... It was kind of a bit of a rom-com, but a bit of a twisted rom-com. And did that was that very like? Did it feel different to play compared to, obviously, horror? Yeah, Stalker. Um, I, I make some films that I think are really, really good, but don't don't do any good. Um, and Stalker was one of them. It's basically set in a house, and um, it's uh, got far, far too much dialogue, but very good dialogue. And I can't say much about it, but it's called Stalker, and I directed it as well. And if you can get onto it, have a look at it, because it's a really, really good film. And to talk about it too much, in case you all go and order it, um, I'll just spoil the bloody film for you, because there's no halfway of talking about it. But there was a lot of words, and it was a big mistake to direct it, because I also had to look at about 17 paragraphs every night and think about directing it the next morning. So it was bloody hard work. But yeah, Stalker is a, one of my favourites. Uh, and a uh, big good idea if you got it out and had a look. I'm a big fan of Australian cinema in general. I think Australian... Me too. Yeah, well, I, well, I, I would imagine so. Um, Australian horror is particularly strong. Obviously, the Wolf Creek films. Greg McLean did Rogue, which was the crocodile film. Um, there was... Oh, gosh. The name was completely fell out. No Town. M Lake Mungo. And one you, th one you don't know is made by Australians is Saw. Yep. Which, which has um, got a stall down there next to me. Saw was uh, made by a couple of Aussies who are now living very comfortably in Malibu, um, but they couldn't get any money for it. And they went to the States and they, they picked it up and I think they're up to Saw 6 now. And that came ten? out the same time as... Ten? That came out the same time as uh, Wolf Creek, so we're sort of partners in that. Yeah. Partners in depravity. Depravity. That's yes. very good. There's a recent Australian film called Talk To Me that's doing really well on the cinema. Have you seen it? Uh, not yet. That's the boys from Raka Raka. I, d I did one of their little uh, YouTube films. Uh, me and, and Nathan Phillips, who was in the first one, who played the young fella in the first Wolf Creek one. And if you go on uh, Raka Raka and, and uh, look up me and Nathan, you'll see a, a, a little 20 minute piece of madness with the Raka boys. And, yeah, and they made a bloody movie. And it's good. And it's made 90 million. And it's the best. Uh, horror film. Who, hands up, who's seen it? Well, get out of town. We'll have to have them in Manchester next year. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a really good news uh, story. Th those kids are quite amazing. They're like professional jackass. Yeah. They, they do it well. They do it really well. And they've gone from making backyard wrestling YouTube videos to making what is, in my opinion, the best horror debut in probably the past 20 years. Are you going to get on the blower for Talk To Me Too? I'm, I'm going to get on the blower and talk to J Racker Racker and ask him to put some money in a horror film I want to make, seeing they're loaded. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing all right now, yeah? Well, that Talk To Me money. Um, yeah, lean on them. There's a question over here from Patrick Bateman. Hello. <laughs> Hi. 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 So, um, what was it like you with the cast? Were you kept away from the cast? Or because obviously a lot of the scenes were really, really difficult. Yeah, yeah. Did you bond with them or did you keep away no, from I was, them? I tried Thank to, you. I tried to scare the Trump out of them most <laughs> of the time. Um, see, I come from a, an era when, um, you know, every time you started a school in Queensland, you had to fight the, the best fighter in the school. And I went to 13 schools, so I could fight. And uh, my, go? brother, my brother was runner-up in golden gloves, and I could beat him. And so I know a, how to box. We got a rumble, John? Huh? Do you want a rumble? Do you want a little? You want a rumble? <laughs> not bad for 71. No, not bad, not bad. I could have knocked him out. I used to do MMA, just saying, if this was, if this was MMA, I'd fuck you up. M MMA, what does it stand for? It sounds mixed martial arts. Mummy's mushy little that's asshole. Me. That, that's me, yeah, that's me. Mummy's mushy asshole. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Okay, now, now I've completely forgotten the question now that I've been fighting. Sorry, sorry, John. 
Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, what was the question? What was the question, Patrick? Well. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to change my question. As yeah. a mediocre serial killer that I am, um, can you give me any pointers on killing people? Oh, you want to, how, to, how to kill people? Well, what you do is you make sure that the oxygen doesn't go in their noses or mouths anymore. And after a while, no matter how, how you approach it, if you approach it well and they can't suck anything into their noses or mouths or their necks won't allow the oxygen to go down, you've killed them. There's so many ways to kill people. It's an incredibly amount of ways. Mmm. Favourite, I think, is a cutthroat, I think. <laughs> you're, you're an evil you, Trump. You know, you know that when I cut the German's head off, you know that scene? Hands up if you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I cut do. the German's head off? Okay. So, Greg McLean is always, because of digi cameras, instead of the old-fashioned cameras, you just run them on, you know? So he's got this habit of, he never says cut, he just lets it run on in case he gets a bit of ad-lib gold, you know. So I just keep going until I run out of breath. And um, sometimes he gets good stuff out of it. So there's this big wide shot where, I'm, where I've cut the German's head off. I've got, his, got hold of it in one hand and I'm kicking ashes and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm mucking about. And I ran out of things to do, so I got the prosthetic head and I kicked it and it went woo like a soccer ball, you know, and which upset the prosthetics guy, no end. But, you know, I ran out of ad lib. But, uh, yeah, chopping a head off is a pretty, pretty good kill, way to kill somebody. It usually works pretty well 100%. We've got another question from the Hellfire Club. You're right, John. Absolutely love you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, just, w just wanted to know, um, have you sustained any serious injuries while filming and stuff? You know, accidents while doing wolf creep? Yeah. Because it gets I, quite physical. Funnily enough, I never got injuries for any of the fights. or I, I've done a lot of fights in, in, in uh, films and TV shows I've done during my life. I've actually choreographed fights. So I'm pretty good at not hurting myself. And when I, when I got hit in the head with a hammer in Wolf Crook 2, I fell on a concrete floor, but I know how to fall, so that didn't hurt. I got hurt once. I was doing this scene where I had to walk along this rocky sort of traverse, and uh, they said I would do another take, and I turned around, hooked, hooked my toe on a, on a tree root, and I fell over and I hit my shoulder and put my shoulder out, and that was in series two. So that, that was pretty bloody painful. But that's the only real uh, injury I, I've coughed on the whole thing. Mm. We've got another question down the front. Go from the extrovert to the more subtle. One of the bits always is the most uneasy is when they're all like sat around a campfire, they're jokey, 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 that one of them says something and you're just like, no, you shouldn't have said that. What are the ways to make people feel uncomfortable without saying anything or without doing anything yourself? I just trumped what myself. A stupid <laughs> trumping question. Hey? Eh? Eh? Look at you. You're just as happy with our brains as the people who got them. Hey? <laughs> eh? Anyone got an intelligent question? Something like that. John. Just off the cuff. John, I've got a Sheila over here with a question. Got a Sheila? Like Sheila's. <laughs> I'm a chronic heterosexual, not homophobic. Can't be in show business and not like gay people. Hi, John. G'day. I think your character, um, Mick Taylor, is terrifying. Probably one of the most scary, even more so than Leatherface, because at least Leatherface kills for food. Oh, Leatherface doesn't act. He's got a stupid looking <laughs> mask on his head. However, who would you rate as the most terrifying horror character ever? Who gave you goosebumps as a child? Sorry, who what? Who gave you goosebumps as a child? Who gave you nightmares? What did she say? Who, who was the horror that scared you? <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry about that. I'm just not used to the accent anymore. Um, so, I, I like horror films that can actually happen. Uh, Psycho got me um, way back when. 
um, uh, Cape Fear, Robert De Niro in Cape Fear, um, Hannibal Lecter, uh, which was a bit far-fetched, but really good acting, very scary, and it can actually happen. It's scarier when it can happen. But as for zombies, zombies, I mean, they walk slower than your nana, for a start. There's no, how am I going to get away from this? And there's bits falling off them, you know, all over the place. I can give Mick a bloody semi-automatic and there'd be bits of, there'd be so many bits of bloody zombies that they wouldn't be able to put themselves back together anyway. They, they put different parts back together, be spread all over the paddock. No, I don't like, um, or, and I don't like uh, Freddy Krueger or Leatherface. They, they should do it without a bloody mask, you know? Do a bit of acting. <laughs> Let them know who's killing them. Yeah. Have we got any more? We've got about five minutes left. Have we got any more questions for John? Oh, wants him after you. Should we just go and get him? No, we'll stay here. We'll stay here. Yeah, I'll walk up. Are you, are you coming over or what? Come on. What? Come here. I'm only coming up here because I'm deaf. That's what I thought. Just get Because I want to come up to you or anything. Can you actually? Yeah, what do you want, nude nut? I want to know if you can actually shoot a gun. Huh? And where's your hat? What did I, was you say? I was expecting you to have an hat on today. Did you? Yeah. And can you actually shoot a gun? Are you actually good with a sniper? I wish I had a gun. <laughs> I could prove Or should it I start you. running? Uh, huh? Are you going to give me 10 seconds, Ed? No, I'll give you about coppers. 10 minutes. I'll make 10 it minutes? interesting. So you're not going. Make gone. it really interesting. You know? Did you get to keep the hat? Huh? Did you get to keep the hat? The axe. The, the hat. hat. The hat. Yeah. No. No, well, no well, we put it in storage because in case they have to use it again, you know. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I come from central Queensland in the middle of Trump, bum Trump nowhere. And when I was a kid, I used to shoot pigs, goats, kangaroos, everything, me and my brother. And uh, that's where we did all the boxing because I lived in a place called Aramac, 700 people, consisted of the Kingstons, the Dixons and the Storchers. So if you had to go to Kingston, you'd get a punch in the mouth from a storage for having to go to his cousin. It was... So I come from out there. And uh, my dad got us a single shot Lithgo, 22, so I didn't shoot my brother in the back when he's going through a fence, you know. So, uh, yeah, I can shoot and I can stab pigs. And, you know, I'm good at it. Which is slightly more terrifying, John. We've got another question. Hello, sir. Uh, thankfully, we've got John Jarrett here tonight, but if that pommy bastard Mick Taylor was here, what do you reckon he'd think to all these bloody tourists? Uh, well, he'd just say, Trump off. That's it. That's Trump off. You know? They don't belong there. They're like... Um, Feral animals, feral, feral uh, trees and weeds, and McDonald's, anything that doesn't belong in the outback, Mick wants to kill. You know, that's, he, he likes Aboriginal people because that's where they belong. And he doesn't kill a lot of Australians, especially outback Australians. Maybe coastal surfy Australians, you'll kill them. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Um, I'm going to ask you a serious acting question. I know. You've worked with Tarantino. Is there anyone, living or dead, that you would love to work with or would love to have worked with? You mentioned Psycho, obviously, uh, as being an influence. So Hitchcock would be on the list. But is there anyone that you've seen a film by and thought? Okay. Trump me, I'd love to be in that. Um, well, I, I, I think the, the best directors on the planet is Scorsese. Um, uh, uh, I've forgotten his name, damn it. Um, I, I just, I've just had a mental blank on his name. Um, anyway, Scorsese, Tarantino, uh, and Mel Gibson. I think Mel's up there with those guys. And uh, it's the Jewish guy. What's his name, damn it? Spielberg. Spielberg! I couldn't think of Spielberg. I'm 71. I'm getting old. And, but um, I also know Mel dropping a little name. I knew him when he was a student, 
cast him in his first movie in 1976. And he has become, as far as I'm concerned, one of the greatest directors on the planet, you know. Uh, so I would really like to work with him. Yeah. I keep I, asking. I nearly did one about uh, playing a commander on a, on, a, on a battleship in the Coral Sea that he was going to do, but didn't get the money up. I went close. He's made some tremendous films over the years. And he's one of my favourite actors, Lethal Weapon. Yeah, he's a great actor. He's incredible. Braveheart, mate. Bra you know? Braveheart's amazing. Wow. Yeah. yeah, he should have got Best Actor as well. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a guy I'd like to work with. That's it. And we've got time. Has anyone got one more question? That guy all the way down there. Tim, go and get him. Run. Tim's going. Tim's all right. The guy with the cap. We've got time. We've got time, John. Uh, lovely. Lovely. Have you got a Beatles impression? Huh? Was that a Beatles impression? Oh, mate, I'm not good at impressions. I'm just doing the best I can. <laughs> it's my story of my life. Hi, John. Hi. Where are um, you? I've s Australia has produced so many bloody good films down the decades. It really has. But do you, would you agree with me that Australian cinema doesn't get the global recognition it deserves? Uh, absolutely. It's really hard to come up, come up against the... Hollywood blockbusters all the time, and at, uh, but we, we're getting them back. I think a third of the biggest movie stars on the planet are Australians now. Wouldn't you agree? You know, Hugh Jackman, Chris Hemsworth, uh, there's Nick. Kidman. Samara Weaving's Australian, isn't she? Yeah, there's just so many. Um, uh, we, we could go on for about 15 minutes with all, all the well-known Australian actors. So I think we're getting in there, and um, hopefully we'll be a stronger force as any other nation when it comes to cinema. But yeah, we make some bloody good films. Mm. And what a perfect way to end this Q&A, from talking about the greatest Australian actors to one of the greatest Australian actors, the incredible Mr. John Jarrett! Thank you very much. Thank you.